Hello and welcome to the Monday, July 24th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In our data, I think we are now tracking about 30 uh, different uh, researchers, as we call them, organizations that are scanning the internet for open ports, vulnerable systems, for research purposes, or to provide data to customers. Well, the granddaddy of all of these systems, probably the most well-known one at this point, is Shodan.io. And we have another blog about how to actually utilize the data. Rob shows a quick example about how to inspect a particular IP address using the Shodan API and how to get uh, all kinds of information about that IP address. This is really helpful uh, to look at your internal exposure and what's often also referred to as attack surface management. Of course, some of uh, the other Shodan competitors and such also offer products around this type of uh, data. Now, Rob goes beyond sort of some of the uh, little and uh, simple parts of the API, but also shows how you can then uh, further uh, drill down into the data. For example, if there is exposed RDP services, you can even get screenshots and the like, which wouldn't necessarily replace sort of your own reconnaissance scans as part of a penetration test or vulnerability assessment. But uh, certainly it's a good part of it. And of course, uh, much faster, in particular, if you're looking at a larger network. And cloud security company Wiz wrote a blog post uh, diving a little bit uh, deeper into what may have happened uh, with uh, Microsoft's Azure Active Directory signing key that was compromised led uh, to the compromise of several Outlook 365 inboxes. What they concluded was that it probably did not just affect Outlook 365. It may have affected other Microsoft application. Hard to verify what's in the blog post. Of course, they're not having access to sort of any internal logs or such at Microsoft. However, they are referring to the documentation provided by Microsoft, as well as to some of the details like key fingerprints and such being noted by Microsoft in their disclosure. They also conclude that the problem was limited to multi-tenant applications. Now, Microsoft uh, did release a brief statement in response to WIS's research. It's published as part of a register article, so I'll link to that as well. The main issue that Microsoft has with WIS's article is that WIS did not have sort of internal insight into Microsoft systems as they wrote the blog. However, they're not disputing that any of uh, the conclusions that uh, WIS came to are uh, valid. I assume Microsoft itself may not quite understand the scope of the event and what exactly happened and uh, where the key was lost or how it was lost, which is why we haven't really heard much from Microsoft since uh, the initial announcement. Now let's talk about cloud authentication. How do you essentially sort of watch the watcher? How do you audit uh, your cloud authentication logs? Remember, the reason Microsoft learned about a compromise was because of paying customers who paid extra for more logs were actually paying attention and uh, noticed an issue with those logs that then led to discovery of the compromise. Well, uh, we have an interesting blog by Resonate that looks into how to look at your Okta logs. Okta, of course, offering also sort of cloud-based identity access management. They do offer audit logs, but having the logs themselves doesn't do you much good if you don't know how to read them and if you don't read them. So uh, this blog post by Resonate walks you through how to access the logs and also how to make sense of those logs. And the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, did publish an advisory with some details about the Citrix CBE 2023-3519 exploits that they're seeing. Essentially, web shells are being 
installed that's uh, what was kind of expected here if you run any of the devices take a look what they have uh, to offer here it'll give you a couple sort of things uh, to look for last week i also mentioned a good blog post that had sort of some of these indicators of compromise kind of to look for uh, listed in addition i want to point you to a little scanner uh, citrix inspector it does check if your device is properly patched it does a pretty thorough job at that it doesn't just look sort of at the version number returned by pages but also by the date header being returned by various pages on the device the date header changes whenever the files are updated so that's not a good indicator to see what uh, version uh, you're running and uh, also if the patch and such uh, was applied uh, to all the relevant uh, files here. So if you have Citrix devices, assume compromise at this point and uh, well, uh, good luck patching. Apparently there are still a ton of them out there that have not been patched. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and Talk to you again tomorrow.